Hey, how you going, crew? Just got out of bed, rolled out, literally just rolled out of bed, put on some clothes, down some litre of water, and uh, I'm here now. Um, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about being judgmental. Don't tell people what to do. Um, I think you vegans are a bit judgmental. You shouldn't really tell people what to do because everyone's got to learn in their own right. So you can't really tell people what to do, you know, because what are you trying to do? You know, change the world or something? Trying to make the world a better place? You're trying to be like an elitist, su supremist? What are you trying to do? You got a, co a, a conspiracy going on there? <laughs> you ever hear that as a vegan? You can't tell people what to do. You just got to sit on the fence with no courage and be gutless like everyone else and turn on the news and get fed more lies. Don't ask questions, just get lies and fries. <laughs> this, this cracks me up, man. Um, here's an advertisement. I was walking through the market the other day in Australia and I just ripped it off the wall because I was you know, personally disgusted. And I'm a voice for the voiceless, our animal friends. Can you, can you, uh, backwards, it says roast pork, what every family wants for Christmas. And then it's got the Australian pork bucket thing and I'm like what oh, I can't tell people what to do as an individual but if you're a corporation you can spend you know thousand dollars ten thousand dollars you know a few billion dollars worldwide and tell people what the fuck to do man what you should be eating and if you don't eat our product you're gonna die so I say heck with that man I'm gonna tell people what to do I'm gonna stand up and commit and share what I believe in and uh, speak from the heart and say it as I see it and walk my talk and those that mind do not matter and those that matter do not mind you know i'm not going to say something just because it's convenient no way i'm going to stand up and i'm going to speak the truth with integrity courage a smile and enthusiasm so as opposing to that uh, advertisement is i'm going to tell you what to do read skinny bitch <laughs> 80 10 10 diet dr douglas graham raw food extraordinaire this one's a good one if uh, people are, uh, you know, trying to justify their uh, animal murder diets, the perfidy man talks about cancer and stuff like that. Hang on, look, look at this man. How, it says, how red meat causes cancer. So, if you're making that claim in a book, man, you've got to back it up with science because your ass is going to be in court. But this dude's untouchable. Why? Because he's talking the truth and he's backing it up with credible science. China study, the most comprehensive nutrition study ever done on humans. And most doctors never heard of it. Most nutritionists go, what? China study? Does that mean dim sims and sweet, sweet and sour pork for lunch? You know, China study, man. Read it, educate yourself, empower yourself. Save your health, planet, animals, family. Save your ass, save your waistline. Increase your athletic performance. So, and this is, this is, this is the clincher, man. We just saw the what every, every Australian family wants for Christmas, roast pork. Where does pork come from? Let's have a look. You ever seen the, the DVD Earthlings? Let's see if we can work this on. This is pigs. So check Thousand it out. Thousand factory farms are breeding machines, kept continually pregnant by means of artificial insemination. Large pig market factories will manufacture, as they like to call it, between 50,000 and 600,000 pigs a year, each. So you sort of get the picture. I mean, the, the footage is uh, a bit blurry because I'm done doing computer to computer. But if you go onto YouTube and type in Earthlings, yeah, check it out, man. And then just empower yourself, man, because it, 
I think it's your right as a consumer to know where your food comes from and what it takes to put it from, you know, production to plate. And animals are just getting treated as production units. And heart disease, cancer, obesity, man, you know, it's all directly correlated with animal products. Raw or cooked, man, it's the same. You know, it's like, you know, fuck, man, I've seen people just go, get so sick from eating animal products, both raw and cooked. You know, and look at the environment, man. Oh, yeah. like, how many trees do we have to cut down before we wake up? How many rivers do we have to pollute with effluent? How many bovine lungworm infections do we have to have? I mean, how many kids with asthma today actually got bovine lungworm? You know what I mean? Because when you're drinking milk, you're getting the bovine lungworm larvae. You know, sometimes it gets cooked out, sometimes it doesn't. Especially with raw milk. It's like, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's bovine lungworm, it, parasites, bacteria, People are going, you need milk for calcium, don't you? I better have it raw because that's what, like, you know, that's natural, isn't it? Because raw is natural. Yeah, raw is natural, man. But if you're a grown-up adult, you know, or if you're, if you're a young child watching this, drink mama's milk, not the mama cow, man. <laughs> if you've got four legs, you need to drink cow's milk. You know, if, you, if you've got four legs and go, mur, mur, you probably need cow's milk. If you look like a human, chances are human milk's biologically designed for you and the correct hormone ratios and the fatty acids and carbohydrates and fats are there for you. So, yeah, man, at the end of the day, don't tell people what to do because you might be called a vegan extremist and you wouldn't want that, would you? But what I've found is if you're going to tell the truth, you're better off making people laugh because otherwise they're going to freaking kill you. You know, it can come down to that. Um... I like to believe that I can go to any situation, anywhere. In a pub. I've done talks in pubs in sheep cattle area and had people laughing and going, oh, yeah, vegan sounds all right, you know, it's all good. But, um, you know, so that's what I find. I find if people are getting too razzed up, then that's sort of good in a way, you know, as long as you're using it small. And into as, as you can say, just about anything, pretty much, you know. That's what I found anyway. So just keep practicing your... Uh, being a voice for the voiceless and do your best. And end of the day, make it fun. Because if it's not fun, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of hard to maintain it, you know what I mean? So, man, I'm already jumping around, man. I'm just ready to jump on the bike and, and just pump out some miles today and uh, do some activism stuff and uh, be the change you want to see again and again. Be the change you want to see. A life without purpose is worthless. You know, the purpose of life is to be happy. And it's impossible to really be happy for causing suffering to you know, sentient beings unnecessarily, sentient sentient creatures, sentient beings, you know, for causing suffering to them. How can we really be happy, man? You know, when our friends are in pain, how can you really be happy if your friends are in pain? You know what I mean? Animals are our friends, man. They come up to us for affection and we go to them for affection. How can we really, you know, <sighs> wow. So, all right, food for four, drink your water, eat your fruit, last cute. See you in the road. I've been to some parts of the world where they eat little dogs like Geronimo because it's a local product, it's a local tradition. I mean, we eat cows in Australia, and you know, because it's local, I've got to have a local product. I can't eat bananas from Ecuador. But I can eat cacao from Ecuador. Oh, gee, actually, I'm not a local war then. <laughs> Ever heard that? People say, I can't eat sweet food because it's it's not part of my bioregionalized eating program. But yes, I, I like cacao because it's from Ecuador. And uh, the Mayans eat it, yes. Very, uh, very sophisticated food, the, the cacao, yes. Or, yes, have a lovely piece of game meat venison. Dear, I ate Bambi for dinner last night, and we went shooting Bambies in the forest local to our place, and, uh, yes, and then when I go to Asia, I eat dog, because dog is a local product in Asia, and I have Prince Charles Cavalier, like this little one here, and we have it in a stir-fry, like a local product, yes, I can't eat sweet fruit, because my naturopath, homeopath, psychopath said I cannot do that. You understand? You extreme elite raw vegan high sugar freak out? Okay? Relax. Be grounding. Do some Bikram yoga. Yeah. 
fasting, juice cleansing. That's what you need to do. You eat too much sugar, too much energy. You need to eat more animals, yes. More animals to run them all.